So um, always wanted to build a hardware project and also recognize some musical limitations of the iPad. And uh, those limitations were related to how you connect hardware devices. So the way you would connect hardware, musical hardware to iPads was through an adapter that uh, was also your charge port. So, you know, it's, it, there's these little USB adapters for, for iPads and you can connect a MIDI device to those, but you can't charge while you're doing that. And so we uh, developed a Bluetooth uh, device and right around the same time, a new MIDI standard came out that supported the, this Bluetooth link, which meant that it had to be really low latency and it had to be acceptable for musicians. So uh, we said, hey, let's, let's make a USB adapter for Bluetooth so that people can connect their musical instruments to their iPad or musical control surfaces to their iPad. And, um, but uh, let's not stop there. Let's uh, do some crazy bright lights and a, sort of a light show so that, uh, you know, if you're on stage or if you're aspiring to be on stage or if you just like the idea of combining crazy lights with, uh, it has like 48 super bright full color LEDs and you can control them from your, your uh uh, phone or your iPad and they, they synchronize with the music. And so, so you can sort of like do a, do a stage performance or even on YouTube, it looks cooler than just like plunking away on your iPad. So it's sort of this like combo device that we made. Um, and it's a silicon surface, so it won't slip if you put your, your, your iPad on it. Um, and we did a Kickstarter and then sold a bunch, made a bunch. And, um, some of the components that we used to build it are now, uh, unavailable. So we have to kind of redesign it in order to build it again. And maybe we will, maybe we won't. This just hasn't been decided yet. Is there any inventory left? There may be, but we're, I think it's basically sold out. We made two runs and we only expected to sell the first one, but we ended up selling through both, which is pretty cool. I, I, I actually, uh, now that we're talking about it, like I'm getting excited about like maybe redesigning it, but, um, uh, yeah, it was really stressful. <laughs> so yeah. I, I don't know. If you did a new one, would you make uh, an iPad Pro sized one also? Maybe. I mean, this one worked fairly well for iPad Pro. It wasn't like the iPad Pro would would fall off, like, fall off if you're tapping the iPad Pro. It worked pretty well. Um, so yeah, maybe make it a little bigger. I, I think one thing that you learn about um, hardware is that the price is often dictated by the size. So bigger objects are more expensive for everybody and they're more and they're heavier, which also means they're more expensive. So the price of something is related to its size and its weight. Um, Especially when you're talking about materials, the cost of material and also the cost of shipping. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I try to think about is like, what can you stuff a lot of really amazing software into that's also very small? And that that's like a... a, a an idea because you can create a lot of value that way by putting a whole bunch of amazing software in something small because small is inexpensive. And um, that's kind of what an iPhone is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's true. I mean, uh, the iPhone is probably less expensive to manufacture than any notebook computer, like any notebook computer, uh, even cheap ones because it's so small. And they've got such high volumes. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's not technology is not what's expensive. It's the size. Size is what I see as a constraining, a constraining aspect. You have to pay more. You have to pay a premium for the latest greatest, but it isn't inherently, like over, especially over time when it isn't the latest, it isn't inherently more expensive. You could have like a cinder block, and that would be big and heavy and cheap and expensive. And if you want to ship it across the country, I mean, well, you know, yeah, the shipping for it would be expensive. Yeah. But the material cost wouldn't necessarily be expensive. You're right. The material cost isn't anything. And there's no software in it or anything. And there's a whole industry to ship those things around. But yeah. <laughs> they don't only ship one at a time. That's the thing. You right. ship a whole truck bed of cinder blocks or right. something. Right. The um, rule of big and heavy is what creates the cost of something is just an estimate. It's not it's not completely true. Uh, it's just but it's it's something to think about when designing products. Because there is a lot of there's a lot of truth to it. But sometimes 
the converse is true too, because if you look at what you can accomplish in a desktop in terms of price per performance versus a laptop, which has much greater thermal constraints, right? You know, right? You're sometimes paying a premium for having power in a small package. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. That's true too. Medium. Yeah. Like Goldilocks. Yes. Like a Goldilocks yeah. zone of medium size technology at medium power. Yeah, there you go. That's probably the probably the smart medium, way. Medium medium amount of powerful apps. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm.